Hey, good morning. It is chilly out here, but I have a poem for you from Charles Simich. He's one of my favorites. Hey, good morning, good to see you. Whoa, it's cold. Hey, good morning, lovely people of the planet. This is Jeffo. This is the Morning Ride Pedal Powered Podcast. Yeah, as you know, I don't know nothing. I'm just a dude on a bicycle trying to evolve as a uh, filmmaker, as a poet, and as a human being. And I really appreciate you riding along with me. I'm really grateful that we are on this big ride together. Checking out the birds. I don't see any of the cormorants this morning. They're those beautiful, black, sleek looking birds. I see them all over the riparian environments of the Boise River Valley. <laughs> we do see them all over the Boise River area. I just don't see any this morning. They're usually hanging out on those logs that are sticking out of the water. Maybe the geese have run them off. Geese can be kind of obnox obnoxious around here in the winters. So, I have some quick medical updates. Went and saw a doctor on Tuesday, which was great. New doctor, first time I've had like an actual doctor in a long time. Well, in about 10 years, actually. Doctor, well, we won't get into his name, but I was very impressed with him. Thank you, sir, for your excellent service gonna see him again at, in December that'll be good check in let's see I want to read you this poem but I think we kind of have to uh, Ooh, I see look at that I'm not ready for icy okay hold on just a second It's funny, I have my uh, microphone connected to my uh, <laughs> backpack, so I can take my backpack off easily enough. But uh, what happens is, oh, there's the cormorants. Is it then I have to have my backpack on <laughs> in order to have the microphone. So, you don't care about that. So this is a, a, one of my favorite poems. Again, like I've, I've kind of been mentioning, I think, um, I've been talking about how I love fall because I get back into poetry, get back into reading a lot, and uh, been reading a lot of poetry. We've got some folks cruising by here, wondering what they're up to. Now we just want to check over your shoulder. You don't want to bliss anyone out, scare people reading poetry in a park while you're recording yourself. <laughs> What kind of crazy nonsense is that? All right. This is from Charles Simich, my noiseless entourage. Um, he's kind of a surrealist, a little bit of a fabulist, um, but more of a kind of a neo-surrealist, I guess is what you might call it in, in literature. This one is the eponymous poem, meaning the poem for which the thing is named, in this case, the book. My Noiseless Entourage by Charles Simich. We were never formally introduced. I had no idea of their number. It was like a discreet entourage of homegrown angels and demons, all of whom I had met before and had since largely forgotten. In time of danger, they made themselves scarce. Where did they all vanish to? I asked some felon one night while he held a knife to my throat but he was spooked too, letting me go without a word. It was disconcerting, downright frightening, to be reminded of one's solitude. Like opening a children's book with nothing better to do, reading about the stars, how they can afford to spend centuries traveling our way 
on a glint of light. So that is Charles Simich, my noiseless entourage, one of my favorite poets of all time. I think I discovered him in, uh, while I was in graduate school. I'm gonna do a switcheroo with the uh, microphone here in just a second. All right, thank you for your patience there. Yeah, so I'm, I met him when we were up in Anchorage and uh, I was working on my Master of Fine Arts degree in poetry, creative writing and literary arts at the University of Alaska Anchorage. I'm really grateful for that place, that program up there. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the poem. Check him out, he's got some great stuff. Um, I. I, I would say that my poetic aesthetic comes largely from his uh, The Minotaur Loves His Labyrinth essay. It's a fantastic essay on uh, poetry, but really, I mean, you can extrapolate it out easily to art in general. In fact, maybe it was about art in general and I was extrapolating it into poetry. Anyway, very cool essay. So speaking of this, are you guys enjoying the poems? Do you like the poems? If you could let me know, I'd certainly appreciate it. One of the things that uh, I love about this podcast is that it is completely useless. <laughs> None of us need this. <laughs> and I mean that sincerely. But there's something I enjoy about doing it. And um, I appreciate those of you who are riding with me and riding along with me. I really appreciate um, you hanging out. But um, what do you think of the poems? I kind of like it. You know, once it gets like really cold, I mean, it's only 37 a day, so that's not really cold yet. Once it gets really cold, I won't be able to do this. Probably. I don't know. Maybe that'd be cool. 10 degree poems. Poetry at 10 degrees. <laughs> I don't know, folks. I enjoy it. If you enjoy it, let, let me know. Um, get in touch with me, uh, jeffo at jefferyoliver.com uh, or at j-e-f-f-o-f-f-e-j. Nice little palindrome there. Um, on Twitter and Instagram. Let me know what you think. I'd re I really am curious what your thoughts are on that and whether that's something we should do more of or less of. Hey, good morning. Coming around your left here. Hey, hey there. I gotta say, uh, Boise is beautiful this time of year. Choose love, choose vegan. Did you see that? What did that say? Gosh, I'm gonna be so late to work. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see this if you're watching the video version. Plant for the animals, you can make a difference. Interesting. So a political vegan statement, which that's the way vegans do it sometimes. <laughs> I don't consider myself a political vegan. I do know that, like riding a bike, makes me feel better. It's local. And uh, I find that I have a deeper relationship with those around me when I eat vegan and ride a bicycle. That's just me, folks. You gotta figure out what works for you, man. <laughs> I ain't your model. I'm just saying, it works. You can try it. If it works for you, that's great. Ah, oh, finally, the sun's poking over the hills there the hills well folks I was going to talk about confidence remember how last weekend last week last Thursday I think it was or maybe it was last Monday I was talking about how I'd lost my confidence I think it was last Monday like almost two weeks ago Monday about how I'd lost my confidence for videography and storytelling and I had that Boise bicycle project event I had to go shoot and I went and shot it and I looked at the footage it is some of the best, best footage I've ever, ever shot. That oh, was really cool to see that. Made me feel better. I forget that just because you don't, I haven't been engaging with the videography so much recently, but man, I've got some ideas. I've got some ideas about this uh, kind of a song poem that I wrote uh, called It's Under the Leaves. 
I'm hoping that I can inspire Jennifer to help me with it because she's a much better musician than I am and get some banjo going on this. It's kind of a country weird thing. I'm trying to make an artsy film out of it. Anyway, can you see where we're headed? That's right, folks. I'm headed to Push and Pour. We're going to get some coffee and then skedaddle on into the office. Oh, by the way, yeah, nothing conclusive on the back. It's still sore. <laughs> but um, gratefully, not horribly sore. Anyway, folks, if you love riding a bicycle, get out on a bicycle and whatever your bicycle is. Maybe it's reading poetry. Maybe it is that uh, you study medicine and become a fantastic doctor. I appreciate those folks who are willing to get out and do that. Um, whatever your ride is, I hope that you get a chance to be on it today. Thanks for letting me be a little part of your day. I am grateful to be on this big ride with you. It's the only one we get, folks. Let's, uh, let's do this together. Say hello. Say hello in passing. <laughs>